Nick Saban is coming back. Yeah, he's returning. It's part of the A-Day experience in Tuscaloosa. We'll have the new captains put their handprints at Denny Chimes. Nick Saban will talk. On the show today, we'll get into that. We're going to get into an Alabama former commit that committed to Florida State and now has scheduled two visits to Tuscaloosa. Could he be trending back in the right direction? And what is the wide receiver position going to look like without Jalen Hale? How's that going to affect Alabama? How about that battle for center right now that's going on? Or the backup quarterback battle? Practice starts back up today, and we're going to tell you all about it as we start to get to the second half of spring practice towards that 8A game. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Really appreciate all of you guys being here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Hit the bell so you know when we're live. Give us a thumbs up. That's a great way of saying Roll Tide, and let's get this party started. Here's your invitation. say everybody there he is big sexy elmo at brett elmore show wjlx in jasper alabama and walker county i'm at broadcaster mick we got a lot of alabama to talk about today we got a jam-packed show because there's just so much to get into as practice kicks back up scrimmages are actually starting during practice and we're going to the second half of the spring practice schedule we're going to talk about jalen hale had an injury, how that's going to affect the wide receivers. We're going to talk about centers and um, the quarterback spot. But let's start with A-Day because it is an event. I love it. I hope a lot of you guys show up. I know in the comments section you guys have said, hey, we're going to be there. We need to make an impact. Game's on TV, but you need to be there in person. And uh, there's a lot of really cool activities, including Malachi Moore and um, and Jalen Milrow putting their handprints right next to Denny Chimes, and this guy named Nick Saban's going to talk. Saban speaketh at A-Day. Uh, <laughs> that's another reason to show up. Uh, it's going to be a great day, and, and Mick, you know, you've, you've been around uh, the A-Day experience several times, and so have I, and, and uh, it's just a, a great day to be on the campus of the University of Alabama, especially if you have good weather. Uh, uh, you know, check out uh, the Bryant Museum. They'll have some activities and just – so much stuff going around, going on around campus, and it'll be a big day. And that's what we're all leading up uh, toward uh, the uh, eight day game. And I think it's what a three o'clock kickoff, and and uh, free to the public. You can upgrade your experience with uh, uh, some reserved chair back seating and stuff like that. You can go to rolltide.com, get all that information. Yeah, what's really cool, and you were talking about this off the air, is for fifty bucks you can get a message on the scoreboard, you can get mm -hmm. a tour of the locker room. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot. It's a lot easier to get autographs that day. You know, you talk about the, the you know, the handprints, any chimes. It really makes the event fan friendly, and it's also important for us to kind of look at this, you know, this new coaching staff. And say, hey, man, you know, here's what we are going to do. We're going to support you guys. Yeah, and, um, you know, all of that um, activity at, at Denny Chimes will start about 1 o'clock. That's when um, um, Saban and the 2023 captains will address the crowd. Captains will leave their marks on, on in the concrete. And and then the, the football team will hold uh, the Walk of Champions scheduled for 150. Um, it'll be uh, Coach DeBoer's first one arriving there at Bryant Denny Stadium, and and don't forget before and after uh, support the the softball team. They play an eleven thirty game against Texas A and M, and um and I believe uh, right after uh, a day uh, we've got some another team uh, baseball yeah uh, boosting Arkansas at six. So uh, make a full day of it. I think Arkansas is like number one in the country too. So. Yeah. Be a, be a big day for, um, you know, just going and supporting Alabama. I, when I was on the broadcast 
for Alabama baseball, those were always huge, man. Like you'd be yeah. doing the call and I mean, it, it, it just great audiences there. You always try to schedule, make sure that you're home with baseball and softball for those. They schedule around that. It's pretty exciting. So, um, you know, go out there and support this this new program and you know and honestly it's it's a lot of fun too you know it's not like you're, you're just going out there and and being bored to death but you know i'm curious what do you think nick saban's gonna say it's a good question um i i really don't know i i'm sure he he, he won't dwell so much on his retirement it'll be uh probably something special uh to kind of get the football season kicked off and welcome coach DeBoer in and, and try to basically rally the troops, you know, let's, let's, you know, uh, get behind uh, this guy. And, and of course the, the fans have, but I think it'll be more of a rally the troops type, type ordeal. And, you know, thanks for everything. And, and uh, let's play some football. Let's do uh, it. I don't know in coach Saban, but yeah, 50 bucks for a video message board uh, message. So, Give me yours. What would yours be? What give me yours? Uh just just um uh, if it's just message only, I don't know. I'd have to think that over, but I, I would just I would pay the 50 bucks just to have my just my face on, on the screen. What what look would you give? <laughs> you know, something like that. Uh, you know? Yeah, something like that. Close to it. Maybe not exactly that, <laughs> but in that neighborhood. Maybe that picture that I have of uh, me uh, at the booby trap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> Given those rub downs. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, look, it's, it's, that's coming up. And so we're getting there. We're going to talk about the, you know, the first half of practice again and some specific battles and, um, and, and what that'll look like. But let's, let's talk more recruiting because when Nick Saban retired, uh, we saw a lot of players say, Hey, I'm, you know, I, my, com I'm backing off my commitment. You know, we're, we're, we're not coming there. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't know what this new guy is. We don't really know much about him, and we're going to go somewhere else. One of those guys was Javon Hilson, who's from your one of your old favorite stomping grounds, uh, Coca, Florida, mm -hmm. and he's a four-star edge, and he's come into Tuscaloosa twice. You see, he's already been a Bama commit before. Uh, now he's a Florida State commit, but this is starting to look good for Alabama. Yeah, uh, I I think this is, I think this is one that may flip, um, flip back to Alabama. Uh, he's one of those another halfers, six three and a half, <laughs> two hundred and two hundred twenty five pounds on the edge, almost and, six four, almost six four, six three and a half. Uh, but uh, yeah, he he's he's committed to Florida State, but uh, I think this is one that that will will probably flip. Um. Uh, a lot of potential there on the edge and, and, uh, uh, been, been playing upright last year. Of course, uh, 2022 he worked, uh, in a three point stance out on, on the edge and, uh, in, and, and in 2022, he recorded, uh, 36 tackles and, um, in the championship game, um, against Florida state, uh, forced a game ceiling fumble in overtime. Uh, there in the high school ranks, the 2023 helped Coco win their second state championship in a row uh, in uh, Division II S. Um, racked up 97 tackles, um, and uh, he's a, he's a he's he's a player and uh, known more for his defending the rush. Uh, he's working a lot on his pass rush game, but um, uh, it's, it's it's another prospect to keep your eye on. It's another multi-sport athlete. He runs track, uh, regional qualifier in the high jump as a uh, sophomore, and um, he's a guy uh, that I believe we're going to flip. I really do. Yeah, you think he's coming back? Well, yeah. he's known for you know being a hard worker, great ability. You have to basically fight him to get him out of the gym. Very wow. athletic, tough, and he's the kind of guy that you want to build your program around. Florida State. Um, Central Florida, Ohio State, and Alabama, and he, you know, he he obviously likes Alabama, and it's it's a good it's a good look for the Crimson Tide when you're like, okay, you know, here's a guy that we had before, and now it looks like he's coming back twice, 
And so that tells you that he's serious. I mean, you know, you get him on campus, get him to know the, you know, the, the, the staff and what they represent. And then, you know, obviously once you kind of get to know these guys, Kate, uh, Kane Womack and, you know, Kalen DeBoer and, and, you know, it just, the culture at Alabama, the fun that they're having, but also the toughness that this program still has. It's a fun place to be right now. And not that look, I love Nick Saban. He's the best ever, but there's a new energy that Alabama has found. And I think that's important, you know, and, and it's tough to maintain that uh, when you're coaching and you know how Nick Saban had to deal with constant assistant coaches jumping off and everything else. But this is a momentum that it's different than what things were like with Nick Saban. Both are great, but I really love what I feel right now with Kalen DeBoer and this program. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it's different. And I was reading somewhere yesterday, one of the, uh, one of the assistant coaches had sent some, some video to a prospect or something or, or a recruit, uh, uh, just showing how the energy was at practice. Yeah. You, you know, and, and it's like, you know, just kind of just showed them, Hey, you know, we're here and, and, and we've got the energy and we're, you know, we're, we're, we're fixed to make a run. Um, uh, I just thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, these guys are working hard on the recruiting trail and it's paying, paying off for them. No doubt. So we'll keep an eye on that, but Hilson, obviously a big time target for Alabama. All right, let's talk about, Practice. I know a lot of you guys have gotten into the comments and said, hey, you, you haven't talked about Hale's injury. I, I heard about Hale's injury, but I, I didn't get an opportunity to talk to someone that had credible information. I just didn't want to say, hey, this is what's going on or this is what isn't what's going on until I, I could confirm that. But it, it doesn't look good for him and, and his knee right now. Uh, yeah. But it, it, that could change, you know, that'll be one of those things you deal with it in football. He'll be back at some point. But for right now, um, as we think about Hale and, and hope that he is is better, Bama's got to figure out what they're doing in that receiver spot and and kind of, you know, what that's going to look like, because I figured that Hale was going to be one of their go to guys this year. Yeah, he's uh, one of the bigger members of the uh, receiving core. I mean, he's 6'1", 189 pounds. Um, yeah, and and a lot of people thought he was going to, you know, be one of the one of the main uh, threats there at receiver, and he he still could be. I mean, we don't know the severity of the the injury, and we're at the halfway point of spring. And knock on wood, this is kind of the first injury slash major setback that we've that we've had or experienced really right. uh, i think and um but you know he played uh in 13 games last year yeah. that's a lot of experience and uh uh you know and and he um uh, he was expected to be one of those guys who who took a bigger role um and, and, but but yeah, and like let, let me say, this is still this is in we're in we're in March, okay? We're still yeah. a long way away from the season kicking off, so uh, don't know the severity of it. Uh, we'll see, and uh, we will hope for the best, and um, and and I believe he'll be fine. Yeah, big, big time uh, disappointment, and and you yeah. wish him the best, obviously. Um, you know, as we kind of see how how long it's going to take for him to get back but um and i said knee let's just say leg injury uh and and leave it at that right now but let's talk about one guy that you could really kind of pencil in as a freshman that's making waves at at practice from what we understand and that's Caleb Odom who's a, a dynamic type of playmaker uh Odom the receiver yes um yeah, I mean, uh, 6'5", uh, 215 from Carrollton, Georgia. Yeah, uh, he's going to be one of the dynamic guys um, on the roster. And and on that, you know, the, the receiving core, um, you know, we need some guys to step up because that's that's one of those areas where um, with this offense that uh, Coach DeBoer is bringing in, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for some guys to shine there in uh, the wide receiver spot. 
Uh, and 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 like you say, um, Odom. <clears throat> Um, a lot of people are saying that, you know, he's if he continues to improve, he's going to be uh, one of these NFL type guys. He's truly uh, a guy who comes in that uh, uh, is highly thought of. Yeah. And someone that could be a playmaker, big target with speed and hands. And so, you know, you as you figure out what this is going to look like, the one thing that I loved about watching washington play last year is the diversity in wide receivers you know the guys that could do different stuff and mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's going to be the case for alabama as well you know that you're going to see guys that can do different things at the wide receiver spot and um and and that can make plays in different ways you know you get the big guy that can that can outleap someone you get the little guy that you know not only uh, can like Bernard, the guy they're bringing in, he, he was a running back and kind of could be a slot guy, you know, but he has the speed and all that kind of stuff too. So it's going to be interesting to see how that, you know, that pans out. But at the same time, Alabama is going to need some guys to, to play wide receiver. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, and, and, and his size, uh, it creates a lot of mismatch opportunities at six, five, two fifteen. And they've talked about uh, how well he blocks too. Um, yeah, this guy, uh, you know, he can be <clears throat> he can be a, a weapon, but 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 you're right. We've got to have some guys step up uh, with in the wide receiving core because uh, uh, we're going to need them badly. Uh, you know, especially if uh, this injury situation doesn't pan out for the best. Let's stay on the offense and talk about the battle for center. <laughs> because Brockermeyer is hanging in there from what I'm oh, hearing. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and it's, and, and Brailsford played on the offensive line last year. You know what? I mean, could both guys possibly end up starting if, if Brockermeyer ends up winning the job? And does, I mean, this, could he legitimately do that? I don't know. Um, I, I, I'm interested to see what we, what we do see from, that spot in the A day game, um, I don't know uh, to, to 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 answer your question. I, I really don't, but um, he is uh, uh, apparently making some noise, and, and we'll see what happens. It's it's one of those things where you you talk about uh, these guys, and um, they're the you know coaches are like, hey, both doing a good job. Uh, yeah, you know. Brocker Myers learning a new system. He's figuring it out. Uh, Parker obviously has experience in the scheme uh, with the communication, uh, but there's challenges for both guys and that they're, they're both guys are working hard and it's competitive and we're really happy with those two guys. So they're saying that, you know, there, no one has really separated themselves. That's what you want, man. That is the kind of competition that you want. Last year, Beth McLaughlin, um, just he couldn't snap the ball, you know, and it, right, it's, right. Like, it's like, look, you can go blame it on the cadence and you can blame it on the quarterback and you can blame it on a guy running up and slapping. But at the end of the day, it's your responsibility as the center to get the ball to the quarterback cleanly. It, so you, you can't blame anybody else. But and I listened to Cole Kublick, uh, who was a center. Yeah. and He was talking about that. He's like, look, it, it's my job to get the get the ball to the quarterback, you know, when he was at Auburn. So um, th this is a position that we care a lot about right now, just because of the way that things went last year. And I think it's really good that there's two guys that, you know, that they're excited about for the job. Yeah. I, I, and you're right. It, it is good to have the competition. It makes them both better. Rocker Meyer um, has, from what I've, have read it's been working with the starting unit brailsford's been working with the twos but i think you could probably flip a coin at this point but uh it's going to be a a storyline heading into a day uh, uh the battle for center and uh it, it's kind of funny you know to talk about it like that because you normally talk about other positions uh, like you know a quarterback race or a you know wide receiver or who's going to play the but 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 center was such a big part of our woes last year or, or maybe complaints with the fans and, 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 and everything that it's become, 
that hot topic, hot seat uh, conversation during the off season of who's going to win that job. And, and it's a very important job. And, and, and look, the reason why, uh, Parker could be snapping with the twos is that, you know, obviously Mac and him were together at Washington and that kind of moves me to the backup quarterback job. Jalen Milrose, the starting quarterback guys, that's just, that's it. He's the captain of the team too. go watch him put his handprint out in front of Denny chimes during the eight, a game or before that, but uh backup quarterbacks interesting. I mean, I think this is another real race. So who knows if, if, you know, if Braille, Brailsford is snapping to Mac because they, you know, they have done that in the past and, you know, Brock or Meyer is snapping to Milro, who knows, but this is one of those where you look at it and you go, we've talked about this before. There are three guys battling for that backup quarterback job and it's been a competitive battle. And that's a good thing for Alabama too. Just like any other position, like we mentioned, it's going to make them better. Uh, they're all, you know, you're right. I mean, take it or leave it. QB one is Milro. Who's mm-hmm. QB two? Um, a lot of folks are saying Ty Simpson's been making a lot of noise. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's uh, been, been taking some second string uh, snaps behind Milro. Uh, of course, you know he lost the, you know he he had his chance last year. And uh, could have been uh, the starters, what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he lost his, lost his chance last year um, and had limited playing time Um, and, and Mac pushing hard, um, you know, um, so it's only going to make everyone better, but, but yeah, this is one of those years, like I was talking about the center position, you know, normally you, you go into spring and, and we were doing it last year you know, uh, and say, well, who's the quarterback going to be? Who's the quarterback going to be? That's, that's not, you know, um, but uh, the number two is definitely going to be someone to, to look at because it, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and again, you know, you get the, the, you know, reports from practice coaches are asked about it and it's, Hey, they're competing. Um, I think that it's a really talented group, great kids. I'm excited about the group. I think there's some young players that are talented and they're getting better as well. Um, you know, Austin Mack, familiar with the system, Dylan Lonergan, and obviously Ty Simpson. Each guy's improving. So, I mean, they're excited about that. You know, Nick Sheridan's excited about that. Tell by the the quote that Kalen DeBoer's excited about that. And they should be because – it's it's like for for that group, they took over in Washington, and you know you're you're in, in getting a team that won like four games. There's not many opportunities in life where you take over a team that, you know, that got to the national championship playoff every pretty much every year or close to it for 15 years, right? So, yeah, so yeah. you go in and it's like an abundance of riches there. Yeah, I, I was reading somewhere where. um Austin Mack, you know, he's a, he's a red shirt freshman, right? Yes. Uh, he's like 17, I believe. He's a, yeah. And, 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 and that just amazes me. I, Mick, I think I'm getting old. Um, you know, cause I, you know, I think about my son who's 15. I'm thinking this kid is competing for the starting job at Alabama and he's 17 years old. And, you know, it's just uh, wild to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just. But Ryan having, Williams is 16. <laughs> I think I'm having a midlife crisis. <laughs> and he was 15. He was 15 right up until the point where he, you know, he he committed to like a day or two before his birthday. Right. That's crazy. That is just crazy to me, man. But, uh, oh, man, uh, I'm excited about. uh Everything Alabama football. I can't wait for a day. I hope we have beautiful Alabama spring weather. Uh, yeah. You know, that's 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 always good. But uh, I can't wait to see them um, uh, hit the field and 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 scrimmage and and see what we look like. It's going to be weird though when you see DeBoer running out of the locker room instead of. Yeah. Uh, but look, one thing that you can 
always have on your wall, Brett. And I do, we do appreciate new life art for uh, being one of the partners on our station here. Uh, this is called fourth and 31. And I want you to take a look at it, Brett, that this is, um, this is uh, got the guy that's putting his handprint in front of Denny chimes, throwing a pass at, to, to beat Auburn. And it was actually fourth and goal from the 31. Yeah. And it was at the end of the game, and that's how Alabama ended up winning. 43 seconds left in the 2023 Iron Bowl. So uh, this is fantastic. Um, Was it really 31 yards? Yes, and it was one. They said it was a one in a thousand uh, analytics that that Alabama could even make that play. Uh, I thought they, I thought they were calling it fourth and 31 because it was fourth and goal. But it was because I said 31 swear words before the snap. <laughs> 31 yards away on fourth. Oh, down. okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, well, there it is, Brett. You, you, if you want to get one of those uh, 15% off with the promo code Bama tailgate at newlifeart.com. So uh, you need one of those. Yes. That, that would look sharp on anyone's wall. I love it. And, and okay. you know, when those Auburn people, and I, I use the term friends lightly because they are Auburn fans and they come in your house, they're going to be as miserable as we were when we thought about the kick six. Oh man. I yeah. know. So I'm, I'm excited about that. If you don't like it for yourself, just get it to cause pain to the Auburn people, you know. All right, Brett, tell everyone about your show on WJLX. Tune in six till 10 central time for, uh, the Brett Elmore radio program, the radio extravaganza on WJLX 1015.com, WJLX 1015 in uh, in uh, Jasper, Walker County area, north central, uh, north and north central Alabama on 1025 HD3. Thanks to iHeartRadio, we're on the iHeartRadio app. Tune in the custom WJLX mobile apps, just look us up, mm -hmm. WJLX, and then uh. Have a good time in the mornings and try to get your day started right. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Share. Tell your friends about it. And uh, again, have a great day and roll time.